Good afternoon, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I know he said he'd be back today, uh, but I was incorrect. So you're stuck with me today. Let's take a look at what we got going on in the market. Uh, it's got a little pep in its step today, which is actually kind of nice. We have the ES Mini trading at uh, about 4,826, up about 0.69%, cracking over that uh, $4,800 level from a retrace back down about 4700 it's pretty nice to see. The Russell up about 0.18%. We have the NQs up about 0.85%. The Dow Futures 0.55%, trading at 37,971. And see if we can crack back over that 38,000 uh, level. I know there is some, uh, some technicians who are looking at it trading back down. You know, you see this in the Dow and really in the ES Mini as well. Kind of a trace back down to this 4,600 area, which is really where we had that massive breakout on a pretty good volume. That was around December 11th. We'll see if that has any kind of staying power, that concept, at least. There is some bullish case, or excuse me, bearish cases to be made. Gold contract, about flat today, trading around 2029. Of course, we had that major high at the beginning of December, trading about 2152. That was very uh, quick, came right back down there to a low about 1988. We'll see if we're kind of traveling back down to that area. That same news, we also had the dollar kind of coming down as well, but uh, still on this kind of uptick. So we'll see if we trade kind of in a consolidation form for the dollar and move back down. Doesn't seem like we might hit the 103 level that we all have been talking about. If this loses its steam, comes back down to that $99 area, that's going to be good for the gold, excuse me, the metals in general and uh, the markets. We have silver trading at 20 311 contract up uh, moderately today. Uh, and then we have copper coming back a little bit, almost up 1%, uh, trading at 378. Uh, looks not great on the short term. However, if you didn't uh, hear the interview I had with Basil yesterday, I'd really recommend going to check it out, kind of getting his insight into it. Again, the, the whole concept with this is you have very large gold suppliers um, who are looking to get into the copper game. We talked a little bit about yesterday how copper is going to be a major player in this energy transition. Again, short term, uh, you know, there might be some other uh, picks a little bit better. Obviously, we see kind of a uh, retracement here in copper uh, on that short term. Uh, but I think long term, this is going to be a pretty, pretty interesting kind of metal to get into. Of course, uh, there's been a lot of this has been strange with the with the energy markets. Of course, you had nat gas blow up yesterday after having uh, the bottom taken out of it. Um, earlier this morning, there was a lot of news going on with crude oil. You know, Brent was trading at like 77. Let me see here. I think, yeah, on Jan 10th, you had it trading about $78. It really come back down. Um, we had it trading up almost near 77 very uh you know, shortly uh, this morning, uh, but we're seeing it come back down again. Uh, these are very volatile within a certain boundary. There's obviously a lot of issues going on in the Middle East that kind of add to that. Libya, which is a major producer of oil, is having some strikes there. Uh, and of course, we are entering uh, cold season as well. Um, in my opinion, this actually, I, I feel like, isn't as bad as it could be. Uh, these, again, not necessarily stable. There's a lot of volatility, but you know, this is only within some certain percentage. And we do see that reflected in the gas pump or in the gas prices, right? You know, it usually takes about like a week or two weeks or something for these major changes to be kind of reflected in the pump. And uh, we've been enjoying uh, some pretty low kind of costs here, at least in Florida, uh, all things kind of considered. Give me one second here to fix this mic. All right, hopefully that scratching st uh, sound stops for you. Sorry about that. Uh, let's take a look what else we got going on. Um, really, let's take a look here. Bonds kind of flat today. Tesla trading down about 0.06%. Steel Dynamics being very comfortable at that 113 level. The DXY, again, we just went over that, trading at 102.36. Qs at 409.40. Google up pretty all right today, 144. We have Meta trading up nearly 4%. Nancy, if you're listening, I hope you... Uh, Hope you went long on that. I know you like playing meta there. Uh, we have Disney trading at 89.59, Apple at 186.31, and the SPY trading at 477. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on. I want to look at AMD quickly, right? We had a caller a few months ago ask about AMD, which I thought was interesting, right? Because the whole hand trick was, you know, take a look at 
NVIDIA. Everyone wanted to get NVIDIA. And we were kind of having our conversation right around here, this $90 level. Um, my argument for AMD was that, yeah, it's not like the cutting edge for training AI, but again, this is what people use to maintain the AI once it's already trained. And I want to say, too, we'll take a look. They just released uh, one of their new graphics cards, which is the Radon uh, RX 7600, okay? So, you know, graphics cards are, among other things that we, that we really know about, right, which is like mining crypto and kind of running multiple processes uh, parallel to one another. This is what GPUs are great at. Um, they're used in video games, right? And this was a major issue that was going on with people who are big. And the gaming industry is massive, right? Um, obviously, you have like your Xbox, your PS4s, but even on the computer, right? It's one of the biggest markets in the world. And it was getting hard to, for, for just general consumers to keep buying new graphics cards because they would be purchased up by all these large uh, crypto miners and, um, and people uh, training AI. And so AMD was kind of stepping in and be like, hey, listen, guys, like we are going to provide uh, a cost effective GPU. It's not going to be able to do everything uh, that a high end NVIDIA can. Um, but for the consumer market, it's phenomenal. And I think they're finding their niche in that as well, which I think is beautiful for this uh, equity. Of course, we're trading at 148.87 right now. Um, that's just off the yearly high, really, of about 150.97, 150.82. Um, it's pretty good. I think this stock looks extraordinarily solid. Um, I hope the guy I spoke with in around October, I liked it. I, he was already he was already in the the equity anyways. So it was. I hope he stayed in that because uh, this is quite a nice move. And this is this is big move on volume too. You know, obviously you had this big trace back, and that was uh, on just some news of, of AI being kind of interrupted at least. Uh, but it came right back up. And we're taking a look at the. Let's see here. Let me pull it up. Radeon. And so this is essentially the graphics card they're using uh, that's going to be out there for consumers. And again, if you're a gamer or anything like that or just doing, you know, basic kind of homework or whatever that needs GPUs, I mean, these are $269.99, right? It's a pretty solid price um, at home, and that's much more in line with kind of the, the historical prices of buying cutting-edge GPUs just for kind of like consumer work. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.